I remember when I got my first painting set, I was super excited to start, but I didn't really know what to paint. I felt a little bit overwhelmed, so I thought I would give you my tips on creating your very first painting. The goal of this painting is to have fun primarily and to kind of learn how the paint behaves without focusing on technical aspects of drawing or accuracy, but still get a nice beautiful painting at the end. When I do studies or explore a specific medium, I tend to do it on canvas board, which is a cheap version of a canvas, or on thick paper like watercolor paper, mixed media paper. Those are great options for studies because they're inexpensive. You can do a bunch of quick tests and it doesn't take too much space for storage. For canvases, I like the thicker ones. I think they're one and a half inch thick because I don't need a frame. I can just hang them on the wall and it looks really nice. I also like wood panels, the same thickness. They have different properties, wood panels versus canvas. Both work really well with acrylic. The beauty of acrylic is that you can pretty much paint on anything. Today I'll be using a large format Bristol paper. It's a 19 by 24. You can use any format that you want. Those paintings will be done from imagination, so the size doesn't really matter. When it comes to paint brushes, it's really a question of personal taste and different techniques and styles. So that's something that I would suggest you explore with time. When you first start, you don't need that many brushes, maybe two or three brushes, different sizes. You can pick up a large brush like this from the dollar store, it works. And smaller sizes as well, different shapes. For a larger painting, these two or three paint brushes would work. And if you're working smaller, then you would scale down your brush size as well. I say for now, work with what you got. Try to learn what you could do with the different brushes you have. And at some point, you'll get more. I have a few jars of water and a spray bottle. You'll see in a minute that a spray bottle is very useful. There's different ways to use it. When exploring new painting ideas, I try to keep my color palette to a minimum. So not that many colors. I feel like it gives a very elegant finish. It helps me understand more quickly what works and what doesn't work in the composition and texture because I find that when there's a lot of colors it could get a little bit distracting and confusing especially for studies or when you first start so I suggest a black and white and maybe two or three colors that you like you could even do it with only one color in black and white you'll see what I mean when we start as a paint palette there's a bunch of choices I'm using today um, one of those waxy paper disposable palette, but you can use a clear plastic bag, an old glossy magazine to put your paints on and mix your paint. I'll be using a palette knife to scoop up my paint and mix. If you don't have those, you could use a plastic spoon maybe. The point being that you don't need to have all the specific equipment exactly perfectly to make a beautiful artwork or to have fun doing it. I try to keep that in mind because it's fun to have new toys all the time, but you can work with pretty much anything. The painting I'm proposing is a landscape because I find that it's a good way to start. Just before starting to paint, I like to wet down my surface with the spray bottle. It allows for a better and smoother blending. The canvas or paper doesn't have to be soaking wet. Just a little mist of water everywhere is perfect. The plan is to have three stripes of color, so white in the middle as the horizon line, another color of your choice at the top for the sky, and another color at the bottom for the ground. Then I'm gonna start blending. I like to work fast because acrylic paint tends to dry quickly. There's no need to rush, rush, because you still have a good maybe 10 minutes before it's dry. I'm taking a big brush for this because I have a big canvas gonna wet my brush and remove the excess water so that it's not dripping wet and I start by spreading my white up and down to create a gradient. I could decide to leave a lot of texture and with the palette knife that would be nice as well but now I'm looking for more of a smooth gradient. Now that I did this middle part, which is the horizon line, I'm going to bring the pink down. So I'm going to wash my brush out or else the pink will be diluted. And I'm keeping the darker pink at the top and I'm going to fade it to a lighter shade of pink here. 
So this is where I can blend my pink into my white and bring it up. If I feel like I'm missing some white, I can just add it a little bit here and blend this up. And here, depending on the effect that I want, if I want a really smooth gradient, I would keep blending into my white, but I could also leave a harsher line. It's really a question of personal taste. Trying different things, seeing what I like, what looks good to my eye, how I feel in the moment. There's no real rules. It's really a question of what makes you tick, what you like. I'm doing the same with the bottom color, concentrating the darker shade at the bottom and fading it to white towards the horizon. So here, before I start touching the white paint, I will wash my brush or else it's going to overwhelm this white. You see here a transition and I bring that white down to my green, which I move up here. And as I've touched back down, I know that there's a lot of green on my paintbrush. So if I want to keep a very light pastel color, I would have to rinse this out again and bring the white down as opposed to the green up. So I dip into the white and I'll fade it into my green. And color placement really gives different effects. Now I went from a darker pink to a lighter sh shade of pink. But if I did the opposite and I kept like a darker pink here, fading it to white up top, it would give more of a, a nighttime feeling because you're concentrating the darker color at the bottom. At least that's my experience, but depending on the color you're using, it might give a different effect. You could also put a lot of texture in the sky to mimic clouds let me do that on this painting so that you see the different type of feeling that you get by placing the colors in a different way it'll give this time to dry so that we could start working on the horizon and put some texture in i'm going to leave a bunch of texture here and dry brush strokes like this to show you an example of what i could give the drier the brush, the more bristle strokes like this you see, which can be very interesting. Another cool technique is to spray some water and having the droplets create texture like this. You see by pushing water here, it's washing out the color and it creates drippage. That could give a cool texture as well. Then by blotting some of the paint, it pulls some of that paint of the canvas and it also gives texture. A very smooth effect and a very textured effect. Both are very nice and interesting. From here, I'm gonna go dark pink to very light pink. So I'm gonna put some white up top to blend it in to get like that pastel pink. This is where I decide where I want my dark pink to start fading. I'm leaving quite a bit of dark here and we'll start fading it to white. So when I do want to fade it, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white here and bring it into my line. This horizon line, I'm leaving it kind of messy because I'm going to add some colors here to kind of mend bridges together and as i work those paintings you'll see the different type of sky from dark to light and to light to dark i have a third canvas here i'll create another background similar to this just to show you that you can try a bunch of different things with the same color scheme and have different results and kind of explore what you like best and what works best. And sometimes things get really magical and they all kind of come together and because they're the same color scheme it gives you kind of like a set of three paintings that work really nice on a wall. So far, I kept my horizon line pretty much to the middle of the page and pretty straight. This, I'm going to change things up. I'm going to have it slanted at the very bottom. Yeah, I'm going to put the horizon line at the very bottom and have it pretty slanted. I'm going to just 
put more green up here. I'm gonna add white and kind of fade it. Obviously, large canvases use up lots of paint. This can be done in smaller formats and they look just as nice. For this guy, I think I'm gonna try to have a pastel, a blue and pink pastel sky. So I'm gonna put some bits of color a little bit everywhere and then blend them together. For that, I'm gonna have a bunch of white everywhere and then I'm gonna add the, the spots of color to create that pastel shade. With a wet brush, I'm gonna spread around the white. I'm starting by blending the edges and removing the excess paint. This looks really messy, but the more I blend, the more it'll kind of create an even surface. You see here, I, I went kind of fast with my brush, but I'm leaving the middle so that the paint peeks through. All right, I'm adding a little bit of water here with some white on my brush and I'm going to fade this all kind of together, especially when there's harsh edges. Now is where I'll be using some black to add to the composition to create horizon lines. It could be a tree line, it could be a mountain, it could be rocks, it could be just kind of like an abstract thing in the horizon. It doesn't have to be very figurative, but because it's black or a dark color, it could be a dark green, dark blue, dark any color, just as long as it has that dark rich pigment just to add more contrast, it's usually very effective. You'll see that it's kind of a random process, but a very satisfying and fun process. For this, I'm using a kind of like a long bristle brush and I'm going to load up the brush with some paint, a big blob of it, and I'm going to drag the paint on the canvas in a random way, but going very, very slowly and kind of like paying close attention to what the bristles are doing on my canvas. I'm working with a dry brush. So the dry brush will give that cool effect of creating that texture and random lines on the edges of your horizon, which can mimic foliage, trees, and give a really cool effect. The key here is to go slow, to kind of get lost in the little details. And as you see things evolve, you kind of adjust. And you can do this many, many times and experiment. And at some point, you'll kind of like what you see and you can just stop there. Here at the edges, I could create with a smaller brush, a little bit more details by flicking the paint up like this, trying to keep the scale very small. Because as the scale is kept to a minimal and very small, your landscape will look more expensive interesting it'll have a calm feeling if i were to put like a large tree line it would kind of call for more details just because of the scale of it so by keeping things very small and dainty it allows you to keep to a minimal when it comes to detailing you see like that little bit here could be a bunch of trees but really far in the horizon. I'm keeping my brush dry and that's the key for this technique. I'm really going on instinct here. I have no preconceived plan. Sometimes it gives really cool results, sometimes not. It's really hit and miss. But the good thing is the surprise effect that I have at the end because I don't know what it's going to look like. So when it looks really nice, I could not have imagined it. It's very unique, but the process is so much fun because of that surprise and because of the no pressure feeling. You don't need much skills, but it's maximum fun. I try to work very slowly for this bit and kind of really get lost in, in the moment, in textures and in little details. 
And sometimes I, I go back, I observe what I've done, the bits that I like, the bits that I don't like. I would want something to happen more here. I'm not sure what, so I'm gonna make a big move and I don't know if it's gonna be a good move. Right, this is my move. I'm feeling like this is a lake and I'm gonna add a little bit of that pink and white in the lake. Little dots of pink and a pop of white. That's good for me. I'm gonna let it dry here and then I'll add more of that texture on this section to create that lake kind of feel. It doesn't really look like a lake but it has that kind of feeling. In the meantime, I want to add a darker color here. So I want that same green, but I'm going to have it be a shade darker. I already had a pre-mixed darker kind of green. If you wanted to darken a shade that you already have on your canvas, you can just pop a little, the tiniest bit of black. It will make your shade more muted, less, less vibrant as a color, but it'll bring it darker. And again, I'm going to go kind of randomly here. And bring this up a little bit like this. To the next grass. Keeping it kind of short. At this point, I had chosen my color palette with those two colors, black and white, but I feel like it's missing a pop of another color and I'm not gonna just not do it because I had selected a color in advance. I'm gonna go with it. I feel like it would benefit from a little bit of yellow here. I'm gonna try that. Going into the second painting, I want to keep things minimal. So I'll just do a big band of tree, like a tree line in black here. I'll show you how I do that, but I did love the pop of yellow. So I will include some of it where the white is, like here. For the tree lines, I'm using black and I'm going to do a stippling motion. First, I'll create the thickness of the line in more of a horizontal kind of manner. Then I will add the stippling using a super big brush. Being bold. Put some paint on my brush. And I focus on the edges. And a rougher kind of brush like this is ideal. Like I said, I focus on the edges, try to make it like not like a line, kind of making it irregular. I'm gonna add some of some black at the bottom here to kind of create a transition. background type of mountain or tree lines but in a muted pink, my muted pink that I was using before. On top of that I'll create a tree line, different planes of a tree line. A couple of trees here, 
sound here. Using a bit of green album, kind of nailed everything together. With just a little bit of paint left, I'm going to do the transition of these two lines. So I'm going to add some white to my sky to brighten the general feeling of the painting. For a last touch, I don't like this section here. Totally subjective, I just want to try and add more green. As I was mentioning, the positioning of the different colors give a really different feel. This gives more of a night sky. So same colors, minimal colors, different placements give a really different type of effect. There's so much to explore and it's a lot of fun. All from imagination. Those paintings could have been even more minimal. Like something like this. Just one blended color of sky and just a few hints of color at the bottom. Something super linear and very blended could be really nice as well. I created a lot of texture and foliage to kind of show you the possibilities. Hopefully I gave you many different ideas for you to kind of take and decide what you like. Maybe you just like this type of texture or a blend of two colors together and that's what you'll take away from it even if it's only one element that you'll take away from it and put it into your own practice, that's amazing. This is obviously the way I do it, but you're different than me. The way you paint will be your own. And by doing a bunch of this from imagination, you'll discover your way of doing it. Something that I never thought of that will be interesting to you and unique to you. So that's what's fun about it. And I encourage you to really try a bunch of these paintings. You can tag me on Instagram if you want to show me yours. I always look at everything. You can leave me a comment or a question. I answer every single question. If you'd like more inspiration, hit the bell for notification, but also watch this video next. It's a really good one and I'll see you soon.